Hi guys. Let's see today's question. So today's question is based on the idea of limits. Let's talk about the question and we'll also understand the solution by discussing that concept of limits. So first of all, it is given to us that A is any positive real number and the limits of a function G is given by limits alpha to infinity and the function is defined as G of X is two times log of root x minus root a to the base e or root alpha to the base e upon log of e raised to root x minus e raised to root alpha again to the base e. This is the function g of x and they have also said to us that f of x is sine of pi x by 12. And further they are asking us to find the value of limit x tending to alpha plus and f of g of x that we need to find out. And we have to find the value of this limit. Let's understand the solution of this type of question. Now how to solve this is, you will be knowing this idea of limits that wherein we, if we substitute the value of the limit, like for example, if I want to find, let's say limit of x tends to alpha, plus g of x first. So if I want to find the limit of this function g of x, now limit x tends to alpha to log of root x minus root alpha to the base e upon log of e raised to root x minus e raised to root alpha to the base e. Now, here if I put the value of x tending to alpha, it becomes log of 0 to the base e upon log of 0 to the base e. That is basically not defined upon not defined. That becomes an indeterminate form. And whenever we have an indeterminate form in the numerator as well as denominator, what we do here is we apply L'Hopital's rule. So if I apply L'Hopital's rule here, that says, what I can do here is whenever I can apply L'Hopital's rule, I can find the separate derivative of the numerator as well as the denominator. And then I can again substitute the value of the limit that x tends to alpha. Right? So limit of x tending to alpha. Now in the numerator, if I find the derivative of that, it becomes log of any value. It always becomes 1 upon that value. So it becomes 1 upon root x minus root alpha into if i find the derivative of root x minus root alpha that is one upon x further in the denominator also if i find the derivative log of this becomes one upon e raised to root x minus e raised to root alpha further if i find the derivative of e raised to root x minus e raised to root alpha e raised to root x the derivative becomes e raised to root x only and the derivative of root x further it becomes 1 upon 2 root x. Whereas for e raised to root alpha it becomes 0. Because it is a constant value. Again here if you see 1 upon 2 root x in both of this. That will get cancelled here. Because it is same in both of the numerator as well as the denominator. Now further you get here limit x tends to alpha. 1 upon, or I should say, e raised to root x minus e raised to root alpha will come in the numerator because it is in the denominator of the denominator. And in the numerator, denominator of the numerator, you have root x minus root alpha. So it will basically come in the denominator. And one more thing I'll get here is that is left out 2 upon e raised to x. Now, again, if I put the value of x as alpha, this term becomes 0. Also, if I put here x is alpha, this term also becomes 0. So again, it becomes 0 by 0 form that is indeterminate. So again, I can find the derivative of the 2 and base separately that is numerator and denominator. So let's find that. So further, it gives me limit of x tends to alpha. The numerator was e raised to root x minus e raised to root alpha. So if I find the derivative of this, 
becomes e raised to root x into the derivative of root x and this will turn out zero so it will become e raised to root x into 1 upon 2 root x minus zero let's see the denominator denominator will again become derivative of root x is 1 upon 2 root x and this becomes again zero Apart from that, whatever is left, we'll write that to 2 upon e raised to root x. So here, if you see now, this was minus 0 because derivative of constant is 0. So now what we are left with, let's check. So I get e raised to root x, 1 upon 2 root x, upon 1 upon 2 root x, into 2 upon e raised to root x. Now here what happens is, again I have the same Again, I have the same. What I am left with is only 2 and that is the answer for this function g of x with limit extending to alpha. So now, when they have asked us limit extends to alpha and f of g of x, I can take this f outside first and then apply limit extends to alpha with g of x. And we already know this is f of 2. We already know f of x as sine of pi x by 12. So f of 2 will turn out sine of pi into 2, that is 2 pi by 12. And that makes it 6. So sine of pi by 6, that is sine 30 degrees. And that is half. So half, I can also write it as 0 0.5. So the answer to the question which was asked to us that said limit of extends to alpha f of g of x that turns out to be the answer and that is 0 0.5, right? I hope you understood this question and how to solve the question on limits by using L'Hopital's rule. So this is the answer for the question and that is 0 0.5. We'll meet again tomorrow with the next question. Till then, like, share and subscribe if you found this helpful. Thank you.